Hello and welcome to the Activation Floating License Generation Quick Take video. My name is Ray Martin and I'm the Product Manager for Licensing among some other things here at Xilinx. What will you learn today? Well, you're going to learn the process for generating a server, also known as a floating activation-based license, serving a server activation license and then returning a server activation license back to Xilinx. So this video has a prerequisite, and the prerequisite here is that you have watched the introduction to Vovato Activation Licensing. In that video, we actually kind of lay the groundwork for what activation licensing is, where, how we're migrating to it over the next year or so, and different aspects of generating a node lock license in particular. In this video, we will specifically look at how to serve and create a floating license, or also known as a server license in activation speak. For the agenda, we're going to do a quick review of licensing changes in 2014.1. We're going to talk through some important notes and things to realize before you start. Some activation floating server license creation details. Then we're also going to look at how do you view the details of a server activation license once you have it loaded into trusted storage. And so we'll cover that flow. Then we'll look at serving a server activation license. How do you actually get it up on your network? And then finally, how do you return a server activation license back to Xilinx? So for a quick review of 2014.1, there were a couple licensing changes that really impact this particular uh, subject we're talking about today. And the first is that ISC and Vovato are now separate entitlements. When you purchase Vovato starting in 2014.1, you'll see two entitlements that come into your Xilinx Licensing Center. The first is an ISC traditional certificate-based license, uh, .lic file, the standard license file we've been using for a while in ISC. And the, the next is a Vovato activation-based license, which is new for 2014. You can see that that will appear in the entitlement list here at the bottom of the web page on the Xilinx product licensing site. Xilinx also introduces activation-based licensing for Vovato, and this is an add-on to Flexera's .lic file-based licensing, the traditional certificate-based licensing. And this consists of a temper-resistant container, called trusted storage, as well as a tamper-resistant locking mechanism. And now some important notices for those using activation license servers. First, that SunOS servers and triple redundant server configurations are not supported by activation. So if you find yourself in that situation where you have activation entitlements, yet you're using one of these two configurations, then go ahead and contact Xilinx customer service, and you'll want to request that your activation licenses are replaced with certificate-based equivalents. And similarly, uh, activation licenses are not supported on virtual machines until, in this case, Vovato 2014.3. So if you're viewing this video before 2014.3, Go ahead and open a Xilinx web case and request that your activation license be switched over. If you're watching this after 2014.3 is released, then virtual machines are supported. You need to upgrade LMGRD and the Xilinx license daemon to version 11.11.0 .11 in order to be able to serve floating licenses. The previous version of Flex that we used, which was version 11.6, does not support activation, and therefore you need to upgrade to 11.11.0. .11 you can get that from www.xilinx.com download on the download center. Uh, go to under Vivaldi design tools and then pick the version you require and then scroll down to the bottom of that screen you'll see license management tool utilities so you only need to download just the utilities you don't need to download all of Avado in order to get the license management tools so now let's get right to it and talk about creating an activation license for a floating server or a server-based activation license arrangement the first thing you need to do is to create a trusted storage area on the hard disk um, now, for no lock clients, this is done by the Vovato installer automatically. Now, typically for license servers, you don't install the Xilinx Vovato toolset. Instead, you'll want just some license management tools, and you can get that from the license management tools download. And there's a couple utilities in that download, and this is found in our Xilinx download center for the latest version of the Vovato software. So it'll be categorized under Vovato, but it's a separate standalone downloadable uh, instance that will just have the necessary things for running a Vovato licensed server. To initialize trusted storage on Windows, you'll need to run install anchor service executable. And for Linux, you'll need to run install underscore FNP. For both of these, you need to have administrative or root access. Uh, for Linux sudo access to be able to do this. Now, once trusted storage is initialized, you no longer need sudo access to actually create and generate and serve a license. You only need it for the initialization step for trusted storage. 
So now that we've created our trusted storage in the previous step, we get to the real heart of the matter. How do I create a floating license or a server-based license for activation in Vivado 2014.1 and later? Well, the first thing we need to do is to create a license request from trusted storage. Again, everything activation needs to go through trusted storage in order to create requests and to then process those requests and load them into trusted storage because trusted storage is where the license is kept. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a trusted storage request for activation. Basically, I need a new license and so I'm going to create a request that says I need a new license. We do that through the Excellent Server Manager utility. Now this utility is in the License Management Tools download. Again, you don't need to download the full Vivado installation. Just download the License Management Tools. It has the latest version of the Xilinx Licensing Daemon as well as LMGRD and these new utilities for activation uh, such as Excellent Client Manager as well as Excellent Server Manager. Now Excellent Client Manager is only for use for node lock purposes. So it's a command line tool only for use in those situations what we're going to want to use in this case is Excellent Server Manager. It's a separate utility that creates unique requests that are needed for server activation licenses. So what we need to do is we need to create a request by Excellent Server Manager into our trusted storage. And that then causes a request ID and machine IDs to be output into an XML file as well as an HTML file. So even though we're going to specify an XML file in the command line, we're actually going to use that HTML file to feed into our browser. And the HTML file basically just has a URL in it that is populated with all of the identification information that we need to create an activation license successfully. And so the command line for this is shown here where it's xlink server manager cr and that stands for create request and then you give it a file name .xml for the request you want to create. And then once that successfully completes then you see here I'm just launching my browser, Chrome in this case, uh, with a server underscore request dot HTML. Again, I'm using the HTML version instead of the XML. Uh, the XML is mainly for record keeping purposes. For this flow, we're going to use the HTML, which will open a browser with this in it and will take us right to the Xilinx licensing website. And again, a reminder at the bottom here for that all activity for activation licenses must be sourced from a request through trusted storage made by Xilinx utility. So if you come directly into the Xilinx licensing website, you're going to find that things are grayed out or inaccessible to you. You're going to need to come through, in this case, Xlink Server Manager. So in the previous step, we invoked Chrome, our browser, and it takes us to the Xilinx licensing website. Now we want to log in and go to our account. And from there, we'll see the activation section has now is now enabled and we'll be able to choose our license there by selecting on the license and then click activate floating license. Now in this example here you see that just activate node lock license is the only one available. Activate floating license is not available. Why is that? And this is actually a common question. What it probably means is that you came into the Xilinx licensing website by using the Vital license manager or the excellent client manager. Both of those are node lock license utilities only. Now for activation we require some different commands for floating licenses. In back in certificate license days, a floating license, a node lock license, it didn't matter. In activation, it does matter because different information is needed for server licenses. So, in this case, you want to generate the URL by the activation server utility we talked about on the previous slide called Xlink Server Manager. And then you'll get, uh, as we mentioned, an HTML file out, which is what you want to feed to your browser, which will get you to this screen here. So once you activate your floating license, you're going to get a, an email from Xilinx and please check your junk folder. Even after all these years, some spam filters are a little bit overzealous and will move Xilinx's license emails to the junk folder. Please add the email address into your safe senders list so that we can communicate new licenses to you in the future. Now, we're going to save this off to a temporary directory. And again, as in node lock licenses, the XML file is not like the lick file, where the lick file was the license. The XML file is mainly a transaction record that we're going to use to turn on or to activate the license. Now, for activating license for floating servers, we need to run the Xlink Server Manager with a dash P switch and the XML file that we just saved off. So dash P means process. It tells the trusted storage utilities to load this into trusted storage to verify that it matches the request and then to activate that license on your server. And so you can see down here in the example, Xlink Server Manager dash P and then the XML file that I received back via the email. 
now that you've created your license, of course, you're going to want to view and to, to confirm that what you intended to be loaded onto your license server is actually there. Now, in the past, you were able just to look at the license file itself and to see which features were being used, etc., by the license. You can still do that here in this case, but instead of looking in a license file, you're going to want to actually query into the trusted storage. And to do that, you'll need to use the utility XLIX Server Manager with the dash V switch. In this case, I use quote format equals long, and I would recommend that because it gives a full accounting of everything in the activation record. So for this example, I generated two license seats. Now, the first thing you may be noticing as you look in the green box area, if you're familiar with Flexera-based licensing, the increment, package, the increment and package strings are still being used. But next to the permanent, where normally is your license count, instead of two, there's only one. Now, that doesn't mean that there's only one license. What that basically is is a placeholder, and then we're going to actually specify the number of seats down in hybrid count. Now, this will become important in the 2015.1 timeframe when we put in activation borrowing. This will allow you to determine how many seats can be borrowed and, and so on. So really, for right now, the message is look in the hybrid section for the number of seats that you created. So now, how do you serve that activation license after you've now created it and loaded it into trusted storage? Licenses in trusted storage are served by LMGRD much the way that license files are served by LMGRD. In fact, they're served automatically when LMGRD is run, and also the, the standard utilities like LMUtil, etc., can all be used to query into floating licenses, etc. So once you've loaded your floating activation license into trusted storage, it behaves very, very similarly to a floating .lick style license. And the difference is that LMGRD will pick up activation licenses automatically. However, there is a caveat. LMGRD, in order to pick up the activation license, must first find a .lick file. So LMGRD is made to run with .license files. Also, it's necessary to specify certain basics of a license server in the license file. So you can see here that the host name, host ID, and port are all required to be specified in the license file, as well as the server command and the vendor Xilinx D for our daemon. Now, if you don't have a previous license file, you can create just a skeletal license file with just these lines in it and the appropriate IDs in the right place. Existing license files, though, if you have an existing license file from Xilinx, you can go ahead and use that because the host name and host ID and port are all defined in that license file and the activation licenses will just simply use those same host ID and port. And the command basically is lmgrd-c, and here's an example of it under Windows here in the black square. So now let's talk about returning server licenses to Xilinx. And you may need to do this when you're trying to decommission a server machine or for some other reason you need to rehost. Uh, basically the way you do that is the same way in which you've done everything else with activation where you need to use the utility to access trusted storage and to do things through trusted storage for a return process. So in this case, we're going to use XLIX Server Manager with the dash CR. Again, we're going to create a request. This time, I'm going to create a return request, and I specify that by using the dash R flag. Now, the dash R flag needs a fulfillment ID. What is that? Where do we find that? Well, looking back on the Viewing Server Trusted Storage content page that we just covered a minute ago, you can see that during the XLIX Server dash V format equals long output, we actually can see here at the very top the fulfillment ID. That fulfillment ID represents two seats that came from Xilinx when we created the license. We're going to now return those two seats back to Xilinx. And so we specify that by using that same number in the dash R switch. So you can see down here in my command line example in the yellow dash CR and then the blue dash R. And that is how you create a return request to Xilinx. You can see that we write it out both XML and HTML. Now this time you're going to want to use the XML file. Now step two is we need to send that return request to Xilinx and then receive back a confirmation from Xilinx. So in order to do this step, we need to actually run XLIX Server Manager from a machine that is connected to the internet so that we can do this transaction. So the command is XLIX Server Manager dash return transaction and there's a couple of different parameters you need. The return request XML you just generated, a response XML file name that you basically will specify what you want to call the file that you're going to receive back from Xilinx with confirmation that your account has been credited, and finally the proxy if that applies to you in your situation.
Now the first thing that this does is this command deactivates the license on your local server. And then it creates a return request back to Xilinx that we will then process. The return is made and your account is credited with a return seat, or in my case, the two seats. And then a response XML is generated. Now we're going to use that response XML to basically complete the process in step three by deleting the licenses from trusted storage. We do that by doing xlink server manager p and this time we're going to use the response file name.xml. And then down here at the bottom is uh, the command lines, switches, and the responses you'll get back during this process. So in summary, first of all, you need administrative pseudo privileges required on the license server to create the trusted storage area, but only to create it. Once you've created it, you no longer need pseudo privileges to serve an activation license or to create one, etc. The XLIC Server Manager utility is required for all activation floating license creation and management tasks. Again, that's a requirement that anything basically dealing with activation based licensing has to go through trusted storage and therefore needs a Xilinx utility in order to interface with it. And then finally, returns require internet connection for the dash return transaction step of the return. For additional information, please look at the QuickTake video Introduction to 2014 Xilinx Licensing Changes and Activation Licensing. Also, the user guide, um, the Vado Design Suite user guide, release notes, installation, and licensing has some detailed instructions on running the different command line utilities as well as their different options. And finally, the licensing FAQ on the Xilinx website has been updated to include hints and tips for activation licensing. Thank you, and I hope you found this presentation helpful.